Welcome, everybody, back to The Treasure Guest, a show dedicated to all things Disney, including those disrespectful theme park guests that no one ever wants to deal with. Sometimes these guests are so disrespectful to Disney cast members that they will ironically be labeled Treasured Guest by Disney employees. So if you want to find out who is the Treasure Guest for this episode, stay tuned as it will be revealed later in the episode. So I want to start this episode off with saying that uh, Disney Parks chairman Josh DeMauro must have had a fantastic holiday leave. I don't know where he went. I don't know what he did. Maybe he didn't spend too much time on leave because normally the the time between Christmas and New Year's is the busiest year or the busiest time frame of the year. And I that made a video that gave you some tips on how to survive that if you guys plan on going to the parks during that time frame. So check that out. However, he just came out the other day and sent an email to all the cast members and followed it up with putting that on the Disney Parks blog where he basically just sent a letter, you know, sending his appreciation and also highlighting a bunch of cool stuff and announcements that are going to impact both um, Disneyland and Walt Disney World uh, specifically. Um, But he talked about a a couple other things too. Some of these that he said will tie into my previous video where I talked about the, some of the things that I'm most looking forward to in 2023 in Disney parks. So go check out that video if you haven't seen it yet. However, The announcements in this Disney Parks blog post or his email are so huge that I just had I had to make uh, my own separate video to cover these things. So I'm not going to read the entire email. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to read a good amount of it and then kind of go over each of the talking points that he provided in there and share my thoughts and and, you know opinions. So the first part of the letter is he just kind of, you know, thanks all the Disney cast members for a great year they had. Thank them for their support and thank them. You know, obviously they had a big change. They changed CEOs. So there's a lot going on on the cast members plate and all Disney employees plates, specifically the cast members. They've had to deal with all this change in the parks. So he thanked them for that. And then he says, and then he goes into it by saying this, our future is bright. As we enter 2023, we have lots of new reasons to celebrate at our parks around the world. Tron Light Cycle Run at Walt Disney World, which is now opening on April 4th, by the way. Uh, Zootopia themed land in Shanghai, which looks awesome from the concept art, by the way. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway and Wondrous Journey at Disneyland Resort and a world of Frozen in Hong Kong. We will be introducing new products to celebrate Disney's 100th anniversary. And we're bringing back old favorites to the park, such as Happily Ever After and Magic Happens, which are a fireworks show and a parade that's coming back to Disneyland. He then goes on to say how he's in the parks and he's, he's hearing all their feedback. He's listening to them. He's listening to guest feedback. And then he says, while well, the following things don't address everyone's feedback, these changes will increase flexibility and add value to our guest experience. And then he breaks down what these new changes are going to be. So at Disneyland, significantly increasing the number of days, nearly two months worth over the coming year, that will offer our lowest priced one day, one park ticket at $104. So that's good news, right? I mean, we always hear about theme park prices increasing every year. We very rarely hear about them going down. And I get it, 104 bucks is still expensive. However, if it impacts you and you're not going to go, then you're not going to go. But I'm assuming that most people who are watching this are, are going to like that news, right? And I'm assuming that, I mean, this isn't going to be during peak days or busy days. So it's probably not going to be like on spring break or during the holidays or anything like that. Most of these days are probably going to be spent probably on weekday tickets, but any good no, any good news where the price is actually decreased is good news, right? So there was that. So the next point he brought up is offering more flexibility with our park copper ticket, giving guests the ability to begin crossing over earlier, starting at 11 a.m. beginning February 4th, which I think is huge for Disneyland. So Disneyland is a locals park. It always will be, right? And there was a lot of gripe about, well, why do I got to wait till 2 o'clock to park hop right especially for annual pass holders who you know visit both parks frequently however what this does is it gives the flexibility of people who want to start their day in california adventure and then spend the rest of their day at disneyland right i don't i don't really see this going the other way as much where it's disneyland california adventure but if you're park harping if you're park hopping who cares right i mean you're gonna you're gonna go to the park sometimes you'll go back and forth three or four times with your park hopper right but the ability to you know spend an early morning in california adventure maybe get a, a quick ride on radio springs racers or, or going to adventures campus and then 
chill out the rest of the day at Disneyland earlier, by the way, three hours earlier at 11 a.m. as opposed to 2 p.m. what it is currently, I think is huge. And I think, you know, that's awesome news, especially for magic key holders, pass holders, things of that nature. Next point is providing complimentary Disney photo pass digital downloads of attraction photos for all ticketed park guests beginning February 4th throughout the Disney 100 celebration. So it says attraction photos. So you got to be careful there, right? So that's not all photos. So that's not like your meeting reef photos. That is just for your attraction photos, which I can't really remember what rides have attraction photos. I know Splash Mountain was one of them, maybe Space, but I can't remember too many too many rides that have attraction photos. Um, however, I mean, it's free. It's going to be added on. So cool thing, right? Next point or final point for Disneyland is making Magic Key passes available for sale more times during the year as inventory becomes available. So that's good news, right? So I know that the way that they've handled Magic Key passes has been just ridiculous, right? Like, I think I had an easier time buying my Xbox and PlayStation 5 than I did getting Magic Key passes at Disneyland. (laughs) It's ridiculous, right? So the fact that they're opening up more now, obviously, I don't want them to open just me being stingy here. I don't want to open up too much because I remember... Disneyland, like most of you do before COVID. And, and there were a lot of times, even on slower days where it was just too much, it was just too packed in that park. So I do hope that it gets controlled. I mean, I know we're not all fans of the park reservation system, right? But it does help with that. And I hope they just don't sell magic key passes to the point that it just becomes out of control like it was pre-COVID. And I will say I got my, I was able to get Magic Key passes when they opened them up for, you know, a couple months ago where I think everybody waited at least eight, nine hours in line digitally to get their tickets. But they finally sent me, you know, my little cool magnet, right? And then, you know, which they give all annual pass holders. And when you go in the parks, they'll have cool things for annual pass holders too, like pins and things like that. So, If you are a Magic Key holder, go get that free stuff in the park. But I like this. So they gave us this little map of Disneyland for Magic Key holders, right? Which I thought was pretty cool. So um, if you're still waiting for yours in the mail, then hopefully you will get it soon. But yeah, I got to figure out some place to put this behind me, right? So I think that's cool. So obviously I paid for it with the price of the magic key. However, you know, the, the fact that we get cool things like that, I appreciate. And I hope they do more of that for the pass holders. And then also for DVC too, right? Like DVC members, which I also am, pay ridiculous amounts to enjoy those parks and those resorts. So I hope they do more during this Disney, you know, 100 celebration for DVC members as well. Okay. So now let's get into what was said or what the announcements were for Walt Disney World. So at Walt Disney World, he says, beginning in the next few months, Walt Disney World annual pass holders will be able to visit the theme parks after 2 p.m. without needing a park reservation, except on Saturdays and Sundays at Magic Kingdom Park. Pass block dates will continue to apply like they do today, which I think is pretty cool, right? I mean, you get, obviously, Walt Disney World is is their flagship, right? I mean, I know Disneyland is the quaint favorite of a lot of people, especially on the West Coast. But if you're talking about the moneymaker, it's Walt Disney World, right? And everybody has to go into so much planning the plan of Walt Disney World Resort as is that I'm glad they're making it a little bit easier that, hey, after 2 p.m., come to these other parks. You don't need to have a reservation, right? Especially for, and that's, it applies to the annual pass holders, which, which is awesome, right? Like if I'm an annual pass holder, I think it's cool that, oh, hey, look, let me just go there after two o'clock. And I think that's really going to come into play. They may change that depending on the popularity of food and wine and things like Festival of the Arts and, and the food and garden or the, the, what do they call it? Uh, the Garden Festival. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, I'll, I'll correct it and put it here somewhere because a lot of people showing up at two o'clock, especially food and wine, getting drunk in Epcot. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. But maybe they'll they'll do less with like you know, blackout passes, stuff like that. But I still think that's pretty cool for pass holders that have the East Coast part. So the next point is making changes that will help our guests get the most out of their visit, such as including complimentary self-parking for guests staying at Disney Resort Hotels beginning this evening, January 10th, which was a couple of days ago. That always bugged the hell out of me, right? Like, I, I hate the fact, like, Vegas, it's been it's been the big thing over the past couple of years where it used to be, if you were a Vegas local, you can go anywhere and have to pay for parking. 
now there's very few select resorts that you can go to that don't charge for parking now. And it's absolutely insane, which I get it. It's a great source of income for the businesses out here, but it sucks when you're a local and you have to pay for parking. I know like people in LA and things like that are like, yeah, screw you, but I got to pay 40 bucks for parking no matter where I go. Uh, <laughs> um, and I get that, but it just sucks that you have to do it. So especially when you're at Walt Disney World, you're paying so much for a Disney World vacation. You're paying at least a minimum of two grand minimum. And that's just at the parks. That's not including airfare or anything else. Most people probably pay, I would assume three, four, five grand for a Disney World vacation. And it sucks when they got to pay for parking on top of that. So I like the fact that if they're a resort guest, they get free parking. I I think that's an awesome change or actually I should say revert because I think it used to be like that years ago before Disney started to get greedy. All right. And then the final point for Disney World is that beginning in the next few months, guests purchasing Disney Genie Plus service will also receive digital downloads of their Disney Photo Pass attraction photos taken in the park on the day of their purchase at no additional charge. Like, I don't get why they wouldn't make the photo pass. Like, why wouldn't you make it the same rule as just Disneyland? So if you go back to Disneyland, Disneyland says providing complimentary di Disney photo pass digital downloads of attraction photos for all ticketed park guests beginning February 4th through the Disney 100 celebration. Why wouldn't you just make that the same for Disney World? That makes no sense to me. Only so when you're in Disney World, only people who are getting Disney Genie Plus will get the photo pass attraction photos taken in the park on the day of their purchase at no additional. So why wouldn't you just make the policy the same? I don't get it. And then they go into other things, how they, you know, announced Florida resident two, three, four day uh, Florida resident tickets, weekday magic tickets as a special package offer includes Disney dining. So I guess Disney dining is back as well. And they're offering a three day SoCal resident weekday ticket for 73 bucks per day through late May at Disneyland. And then he just goes on to, you know, say how awesome Disney is and how excited he is. So, you know, I think this is awesome. Um, Josh Tomorrow has always been a favorite. He's always been like the diamond in the rough, especially over these past few years. JPEG literally, I think, damn near ruined the Disney company. And Josh Tomorrow was that like one tiny bright light in the system. He would be on the parks, um, you know, and he's always approachable, willing to talk to anybody. He does listen to their feedback. From what I could tell, Everybody, and I'm not a Disney employee, so what do I know? But perception is that a lot of people like him and that he's also possibly in the running to replace Iger here in the next couple of years, which I think having a parks guy as a CEO has been long overdue for the Disney company. I mean, if you think about Disney parks generate the most revenue for that company, hands down. So I think having a parks guy running things for the entire corporation would be a beautiful thing. But who knows? We have a we have a long way to go between now and then. And I'm glad he didn't quit because he did talk about recently where he was thinking about quitting during JPEG. So just think about how like how horrible one bad leader can be. Right. Just think about that. I know we I know most of us experience that day to day in our, our own jobs. But effective leadership can make the difference for, for your employees and, and just people around you generally, right? So that's just crazy. But anyway, what are your thoughts on Josh Tomorrow and the updates to the parks? Uh, leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, thumbs up. And all that happy jazz, I really want to see what your thoughts are when it comes to all these new things and these new announcements. All right. So now let's get into the treasured guest portion of the show. Uh, so this week's treasured guest comes to us from WDW News Today, where a former guest relations cast member was caught trying to sneak in a utilidor. So if you don't know what the utilidors are, so... Disney World in the Magic Kingdom, it's actually the, the level that you walk on is not the ground floor. There's actually a whole set of tunnels that are underneath the entire Magic Kingdom. And the reason for that is because when Walt built Disneyland and when Disneyland was in operation, he saw things like the person in a cowboy costume was going over to Tomorrowland and things like that didn't, didn't really quite mesh, right? And he wanted to keep up the scene and, and didn't want things like that impacting the guests. So... When he built Disneyland, he had a design where there'd be this utilidor system. So that way, employees can do whatever they need to do under the park. There's offices down there. I've actually taken a tour of the utilidors a few years ago. I did that. So it is something that's pretty cool to see. And when you're down there, you're literally 
like just looking around and you're like, oh my God, this thing is so vast. So, but anyway, so this former guest relations cast member was caught trying to go back into the Utilidors. And when he was confronted by security, he ran over security guard's foot with a stroller. So let's go over the article as described by WDW News Today. Former guest relations cast member attempts to sneak in the Magic Kingdom Utilidors repeatedly rams security with a stroller. Florida man, of course, it's always a Florida man, right? Was arrested after he apparently got caught trying to sneak into the Magic Kingdom Utilidors last month. When confronted, the man took the stroller and ran over a Disney security guard's foot repeatedly, according to the arrest report. Now the man, Eugene Zenner, is charged with battery on a uniformed security officer, which is a third-degree felony, according to Orange Circuit Court records. He has pleaded not guilty. And look at this guy. I mean, yeah, I didn't think I would see this dude with a stroller. And yeah, anyway, there's your Florida man for you. So Zenner, who is 62 years old of St. Cloud, likely knows something about Disney backstage areas and bad guest behavior. On his LinkedIn profile, he says he previously worked in guest relations at Walt Disney World for nearly seven years. Several cast members have reached out to WWE News Today to add that he he was a current employee at the time of the incident, but is not mentioned in a report. Otherwise, his lawyer did not respond immediately to request for comment. And the situation that led to his arrest unfolded on November 17th, according to the Orange County Sheriff's arrest report that was, that was released this week. The arrest report notes that Disney security lured the sheriff's deputy about a verbal argument turned battery that occurred in the park by the tunnels near the entrance. By tunnels, the deputy is referring to the Magic Kingdom Utilidors. The security guard said he saw the Hawaiian t-shirt clad Zenner Lift and remove the security ropes, which is designed to keep people from entering the secured area, the arrest report said. Zenner ignored security guard telling him to stop. Instead, he lifted up the ropes to help his wife through. Security guard approached them and attempted to tell him to stop as they violated company policy, but they kept yelling at him to move out of their way as they continued to the park. Security guard ordered them to stay put so he can report the incident to his supervisor. Then Zenner took a stroller he had been pushing and ran it over the security guard's foot. It happened again. The security guard ordered them to stay. And Zenner rammed the guard with the stroller. Disney could not provide surveillance footage of the alleged attack, the report noted. That's probably because it was in the Utilidors. They don't want to disclose anything that is backstage, right? Security guard who wasn't injured said he was ran over intentionally and wants to pursue criminal charges against Zenner. So all the things you can press charges for, getting your your foot ran over by a stroller. That's a unique one, right? When speaking with law enforcement, Zenner accuses security guard of being overly aggressive with him but wouldn't elaborate with more details, the deputy said in the arrest report. Zenner's family refused to give statements to law enforcement. Zenner said he just wanted to leave the Magic Kingdom with his family. Instead, he was arrested and transported to the Orange County Jail. Disney security trespassed Zenner's wife and son. Zenner claimed he didn't have an ID and said his name was Robert Jones. When the deputy patted Zenner down to search for weapons, he found Zenner's wallet with his ID that showed his real name. Uh, due to the process not clearly hindering my investigation or an unreasonable amount of time, I will not charge him for providing false information that be wrote in the rest report. And that's not surprising because when people get caught, they panic and they do foolish things. Uh, so the fact that this guy not only got caught and then tried to, I don't know, escape maybe, and then also provide, you know, the wrong name uh, to police, I, I I'm not a cop, but I'm assuming that's not anything new when bad guys get caught and arrested. Orange Circuit Court Records, Zenner submitted a reference letter in December written by his former U.S. Army Colonel David Moran. Eugene embodies the highest levels of professional character and moral fortitude in the most stressful situations, Moran wrote, adding that Zenner tallied 32 years of active service in the military. (laughs) Like, wow, how far we fall, right? I mean, you know, this dude, 32 years in the military... Works at Disney for seven years and then gets caught doing something stupid. And now he's trespassed from the parks, possibly fired if he was an actual employee. And I am assuming some type of jail, community service or fine will probably happen as well. So there you are. 
Robert Zenner, our treasured guest for this week. All right, everybody. So, um, you know, let me know your thoughts. What do you think uh, your thoughts are on Mr. DeMauro and the awesome announcements that he made? I'm a fan of all of them. I hope they do more to kind of bring back the theme park fans to the parks and, and you know, give them more incentives and, and take care of us and treat us like they used to. And also, what do you think about this week's treasured guest? I mean, that is a unique one, right? And there was a lot to unpack there. So thank you for staying patient as I read you that entire article. But, you know, I promised you that it was going to be one that's worth it. And I promise you good treasured guest uh, each time we do this show. So please comment, subscribe, leave your comments down below. Uh, send us an email info dot take warning network info at take warning network dot com and if you see your own treasure guest in your parks feel free to share because you never know your content may be new used on the show one day so this is greg reminding you guys all to be respectful and courteous to the cast members in the parks do not become a treasure guest yourself have an awesome day everybody